Alright, so today's video is going to be dealing with chapter 15, section 2, which is determining pH and titrations. And we'll start off first with this reaction that shows basically how a pH indicator works. And it works by having a hydrogen and some sort of anion. That's what this component is. Or rather, it's in a compound right there, but the anion component is over here. And it's a reversible reaction in which uh, the indicator compound breaks up into H plus ions, so protons, and an anion in solution. And if you add an acid to this mix, it will shift the balance to the left because there's too many H plus ions over here. They'll recombine with these anions and shift the equilibrium to the left. Similarly, if you have a base, all the OH minus ions that the base gives off in solution will combine with these and you'll have free anions over here so the balance will shift to the right. And so it's these different concentrations of whether there's more of the original indicator compound or whether it's broken up into this ion and solution that gives a pH indicator its specific color. It should be noted, however, that pH indicators only work within a certain range. So let's say uh, you have a pH indicator that gives off all these different colors down here. Odds are the pH indicator doesn't work all the way from 0 to 14. More than likely it works within a specific range. So if it's used as an acid indicator, this may be 3, this may be 6, or if it's a base indicator, this may be 8 and this 10. Acids only work within what's called their transition interval. Basically, the pH range in which a noticeable color change takes place. Moving on now, we're going to be covering titration, which is the second half of this section. And titration is an experimental skill that I'll define later. But before we go into exactly what it is, we have to uh, remember that strong acids and bases dissolve completely in solution. So if you have one liter of one molar hydrochloric acid and one liter of one molar sodium hydroxide, these will form, you know, these contain one mole of hydro hydronium ions and one mole of hydroxide ions, respectively. And if you were to combine these in solution, the free protons from here would c combine with the extra electron here to form neutral water of a certain concentration. And because these would cancel out, they exist in what are known as chemically equivalent amounts. And if you have an acid and base that exist in chemically equivalent amounts in solution, they'll form a neutral pH of 7 with a lot of water in what's known as a neutralization reaction. Now you can use this knowledge of neutralization and as long as you know the concentration of your acid or your base, you can add a known concentration, say one molar HCl, to an unknown concentration, say x molar NaOH, slowly until you have a neutralized solution. In other words, you can add a certain amount of a known molar solution of an acid or base and figure out the concentration of the opposite acid or base uh, from your experimentation. Now, these experiments to determine the concentration of, you know, some solution all depend on what is known as the equivalence point. And for strong acids and bases, which neutralize completely, that equivalence point always occurs at 7. And so you can see as you slowly add NaOH to to some unknown solution of, let's say, hydrochloric acid, just to keep consistency, there comes a point where after you've added enough, the pH will spike through and you'll be making it basic. And it's at this point halfway between where it's acidic down here and basic up here that you reach, you know, the, chemi the chemical equivalence point where you have the same concentration of hydroxide ions as you do hydronium ions. 
And as a final intro to vocabulary before we get into some practice problems, when you're titrating, say, a base down here into an acid, releasing a tiny amount at a time, uh, you would refer to the bottom solution as the standard solution. In other words, this is the solution where you know the concentration, say, one molar HCl. It's also sometimes called the known solution just uh, for practical purposes. And then if you want to see a detailed titration uh, procedure more than I could fit in this video, either talk to your teacher or uh, see figure 10 on pages 518 through 519 of your modern chemistry textbook. And briefly now we'll run through a few calculations about figuring out the concentration of this mystery solution. All right, so now let's do a sample problem to determine the pH of a mystery solution. So we're given 20 milliliters of 5 times 10 to the negative third molar uh, sodium hydroxide to neutralize 10 milliliters of some concentrated solution of hydrochloric acid. And so now we have to find the concentration of that solution. So you start off with your reaction equation, as you usually do. From there, you calculate the moles of hydroxide that were used. So for 5 times 10 to the negative third moles per liter due to the molarity of the solution times 1 liter per every thousand milliliters times 20 milliliters used in total. And then you cancel the units to make sure you're doing everything right. And from there you get that 1 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of NaOH were used. From there, you calculate how many moles of HCl must therefore be in the solution to neutralize that 1 times 10 to the 4th mole of NaOH. So 1 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of NaOH. And then if you look at your balanced equation, you'll notice there's a 1 to 1 correspondence because there's no coefficient of moles of NaOH to moles of HCl. So one mole HCl for every mole of sodium hydroxide. And then you get that, once again, one times 10 to the minus fourth moles of hydrochloric acid were used. From there is just a simple molarity calculation. You know, molarity equals moles per unit volume and because we have 1 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of HCl, and we know from the problem that there was 10 milliliters of the solution used in the titration, we get that it's a 1 times 10 to the negative 2 molar solution of HCl.